Welcome to Creepy Tales and Curiosities. As Halloween approaches, it's easy to get caught up in the fun, costumes, candy, haunted houses, but for some, this holiday has turned into a real-life horror show. In this series, we'll explore some of the most chilling crime stories that occurred on Halloween night. These real-life tragedies prove that the scariest things don't just go bump in the night, they're all too real. Our first story is one that has haunted parents for decades and forever changed the way we approach Halloween candy safety. In 1974, eight-year-old Timothy O'Brien was excited to head out for a night of trick-or-treating in his neighborhood of Deer Park, Texas. Dressed up and eager to collect candy, Timothy joined his sister and friends as they made their rounds door to door. After they returned home from their Halloween adventure, Timothy begged his dad, Ronald O'Brien, for just one more piece of candy before bed. Ronald handed him a pixie sticks, one of the longer ones that Timothy had received while trick-or-treating. Eagerly, Timothy ate the candy, but within minutes, he began feeling violently ill. He started vomiting uncontrollably and was soon convulsing on the floor. Despite rushing him to the hospital, Timothy tragically died shortly after arriving. Initially, it seemed like a nightmare scenario. Someone in the neighborhood must have laced candy with poison, sparking widespread panic about the dangers of Halloween candy. But what followed was even more horrifying. Investigators discovered that Ronald O'Brien, Timothy's own father, had laced the candy with potassium cyanide. Ronald had taken out hefty life insurance policies on both of his children in the months leading up to Halloween, hoping to stage his son's death as part of a sinister plot to collect the payout. To cover his tracks, he had handed out poisoned pixie sticks to his daughter and other neighborhood children, but none of the others ate the candy. The crime shocked the nation, and Ronald was eventually convicted of capital murder. He was executed by lethal injection in 1984, earning him the grim nickname, The Candyman. In the Bronx, New York, in 1998, a harmless Halloween prank turned deadly. Carl Jackson, a 21-year-old administrative assistant at Morgan Stanley, was looking forward to a quiet Halloween night. He and his girlfriend were on their way to pick up her son from a Halloween party when a group of teenagers targeted Jackson's car, pelting it with eggs, a common mischief night prank. Infuriated by the prank, Jackson got out of the car to confront the teens. What started as an argument quickly escalated into violence when one of the teenagers, Curtis Sterling, pulled out a 38 caliber revolver and shot Jackson in the head. He died instantly. Sterling was just 17 years old at the time of the murder. This act of senseless violence shocked the Bronx community and Curtis Sterling was later arrested and charged with second degree murder. He was convicted and sentenced to prison. The tragedy highlighted the dangers of mischief night pranks gone wrong, especially when tensions run high. Jackson's death serves as a grim reminder that even a simple prank can escalate into deadly consequences. In the peaceful, close-knit Orthodox Jewish community of Long Beach, New York, Halloween night in 1986 became the setting for a disturbing, unsolved murder. Chaim Weiss, a 15-year-old student at the local Masifta of Long Beach Yeshiva, was found bludgeoned to death in his dorm room early the morning after Halloween. Chaim was a popular and well-liked student with no known enemies, making his brutal murder even more shocking. He had been struck on the head multiple times with a heavy, blunt object. What truly mystified investigators was the ritualistic nature of the scene. Chaim's body had been moved after the attack, and the window of his dorm room was left open, a practice in Jewish custom meant to allow the spirit of the deceased to leave. Despite interviewing dozens of students and community members, police found no clear motive or suspects, and no weapon was ever recovered. Some believe the murder was an inside job, while others speculate that Kaim's death may have been the result of a religious or ritualistic act. Over the years, the case has grown cold, leaving Kaim's family and the Long Beach community haunted by questions that remain unanswered. Even today, the death of Chaim Weiss is one of New York's most baffling unsolved murders. Halloween night in 2001 marked the last time anyone saw 21-year-old Cindy Song, a student at Pennsylvania State University. 
That night, Cindy attended a Halloween party with friends, dressed as a bunny. The party lasted into the early hours of the morning, and Cindy was last seen being dropped off at her apartment around 4 a.m. Despite her friend's reassurances that she had made it home safely, Cindy mysteriously vanished without a trace. When friends tried to contact her the next day and she failed to show up for a planned visit, panic set in. Police found no signs of forced entry or a struggle at her apartment. Her purse, keys, and cell phone were all still inside, but Cindy was gone. Numerous theories have emerged over the years about Cindy's fate. Some speculate that she was abducted by a serial killer operating in the area at the time, while others believe she may have been the victim of a targeted kidnapping. A possible break in the case came when a convicted bank robber claimed that his accomplice had killed a woman matching Cindy's description and buried her body in a remote area. However, no remains were ever found and the lead went cold. Cindy Song's disappearance remains an unsettling mystery that continues to baffle investigators to this day. Our final story takes place in the affluent neighborhood of Greenwich, Connecticut, in 1975, where 15-year-old Martha Moxley was brutally murdered after a night of mischief night pranks. Martha, along with a group of friends, spent the night roaming their neighborhood, toilet papering houses, and playing pranks, a tradition leading up to Halloween. But when Martha failed to return home, her family grew concerned. Her body was found the next morning, bludgeoned with a golf club on her family's property. The discovery of the murder weapon, which was traced back to the Skakel family, one of Greenwich's most powerful and influential families, sent shockwaves through the town. For years, the case remained unsolved, despite suspicions surrounding Michael Skakel, a cousin of the Kennedys, who was 15 at the time of the murder. It wasn't until 2002 nearly 27 years later, that Michael Skakel was arrested and convicted of Martha's murder. Skakel has consistently maintained his innocence, and the case remains mired in legal disputes and public fascination, particularly due to the high-profile nature of those involved. Martha's tragic murder on the eve of Halloween serves as a haunting reminder that even in the safest of neighborhoods, the scariest monsters can sometimes be the people we think we know. Halloween is a time for thrills and frights, but for the families affected by these crimes, the horror is all too real. These stories remind us that true terror can strike at any time, even on a night when we're supposed to feel safe behind our masks. In part two, we'll dive deeper into more chilling crimes that took place on Halloween. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss it. And if you've heard of other true crime stories tied to Halloween, Share them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Until next time, my friends,